Hi everyone, welcome back to the Model 3 Man channel. It is Wednesday and this is the third tip of the day this week. They've been a little late in being uploaded, but I'm not sure changing you. They will be four this week as normal. The tip of the day today, which is by the way episode number 37, is a very important episode. It has to do with best charging practices. And for all of you driving a Tesla, especially um, the Model 3, because that's my car, the tips I'm going to give you today are important to take to heart and to put into practice if you want your battery to last. But before we get to that, I want to give you a little bit of feedback and uh, I'll upload the graphics so that you, you can see it for yourself. A few weeks back, I uploaded an episode on how to get the maximum range from your car after a charge. So you charge your car, how do you extend the range? How do you get the most possible distance? And somebody in the comment section, I love the comment section, there's so many good things, so many nuggets to pick up, said to me, why don't you do a trip on a flat level surface and the one direction, do all the bad things you told us not to do, and on the return journey, do all the good things you encouraged us to do and show us the difference. Boy, was it different. I took my car to get ceramic coating refresher from Ken Wilson. By the way, we're coming up soon with an episode on how to take care of your car once it's been wrapped and ceramic treated. On the way there, I went crazy. I accelerated from the lights. I sped up a little. I, I drove at 120k per hour. I did all the bad things I'm asking you to avoid. On the way back, I drove sedately and carefully and put into effect all of the good things I'd recommended. Here's the difference. The trip was 46 to 47 kilometers. On the way there, I used eight kilowatt hours, but very specifically, it was 173 watt hours per kilometer. On the way back, driving very carefully, it was six kilowatt hours used, and the exact watt hours per kilometer 140. So I improved from 173 watt hours consumed per kilometer to 140 watt hours per kilometer. That's very significant. Take my advice and your car will go a long way. I just wanted to give you a feedback on that particular episode. Uh, the numbers are very instructive. Let's get to today's episode, best charging practices. Number one, avoid the extremes. It's neither good to drop your battery right down 3%, 2%, 4%, 1% is not a good thing, but going to 100% and leaving your car sitting is also not a good thing. If you're going on a trip, charge it to 100, but organize it so that it reaches that 100% just before you're about to set off. Avoid the extremes of state of charge that's very low or putting it at 100% and just leaving it there and not going anywhere with that. Number two, if you're on the road and you're going to be heading toward a supercharger location, press the little charging icon on your screen, select the supercharger you're heading toward. And what does that do? It gives the car the opportunity to precondition the battery and to prepare for the act of charging to get itself into the best state of readiness so that it can receive the fastest charge. Number three, this is a cold weather tip. If you live in a climate where the temperature gets very, very, very low, you know that cold reduces the range of the battery very significantly. So in a climate like that, you wanna make sure that you've left the charger plugged into the car and that half an hour, well, 30 to 40 minutes before you're about to leave, you tap on the defrost symbol in your phone app. What will that do? Well, it will precondition the battery. It'll warm up all the important things that need to be warmed up so you can open your car and get into it, giving the car enough time, but using power to do that by leaving it plugged in. And so when the battery gets preconditioned in that fashion, when you start the trip, you've got greater range. I know that the battery's gonna tend to chill, with the outside cold temperatures, but because you're driving the car, that in itself is keeping the battery warm. So warm it up properly before you leave on your phone, hit the climate and hit the defrost icon. Number four concerns our behavior when we get to a supercharging location. 
Now, one of the important and the fairly obvious things, but it isn't always in my experience, don't jump the line. If all of the charging stations are full and there are some cars obviously waiting, get behind them. Don't drive around and keep cruising until someone comes out and then you jump into their place. There is a line, join the line. You'd hate it if somebody jumped in front of you when you'd been waiting patiently. The other practice at a supercharging location that we should follow is to not use the second charger of a pair. So for example, if there are two chargers next to each other, 2A and 2B. If someone's in 2A, don't go and plug into 2B. Go to a number where there is nobody charging either on the A or the B and you'll get a faster charge, added to which you won't be slowing down their charge because if you parked into 2B and somebody was in 2A, their charge rate will suddenly drop as you begin drawing charge. Paired charges share the same amount of current. Number five, it is true that the more empty your battery, the quicker the recharge process will take place. So in other words, if you dropped it down to 15% or yeah, 13, 12%, the battery is gonna charge really quickly from that point on and when it gets to the 70% and higher, it's going to slow down materially. Now, Trevor Page and Ian Pavelko, when they did their cross Canada trip, they learned the importance of that. They deliberately planned to drop their state of charge pretty low as they were traveling, get into a supercharged location, and charge as fast and quickly as they could until it slowed down. And then they unplugged and off they went. So if you're looking to spend the least amount of time at the stations, let your battery go relatively low. I'm not talking ridiculous 2%, 3%, but I'm saying the lower it is, the faster it will charge. And that's a useful hint when you're on the road a lot. Number six. If conditions are extremely hot, and I'm going to refer back to my vacation last year when we were in Palm Desert, and during the day it was like 42 Celsius or 44 Celsius. It was just crazy. And when I got to the charging station and I began charging, it was so slow. And of course the fan came on and the refrigerant compressor came on and it was, I just unplugged. We went back to stay with the friends that we were staying at. And that night at 11 o'clock, I came back. The air was much cooler. I plugged it in and it charged at a very fast rate. So if you have the luxury of being able to wait until the best time of day, don't charge in the middle of a very, very hot spell. Wait until the evening. And then also most people are not charging and you'll be able to get your charge in a relatively short space of time. Number seven, preparing for a trip. You may not have noticed, but if you go into the charging options in your car and you choose either scheduled start time or scheduled departure time, both of these do very different things. Scheduled start time means you're telling the car at exactly what time you want it to start charging. Scheduled departure means you're telling the car when you want to leave and the car will decide when it starts to charge to ensure that the charge completes just before you're about to set off. So on a long trip, I wanna to go to 100%, I set it to scheduled departure, and I give the car the departure time that I intend to leave at. Regular charging. We can set the charge limit. We can set it to 75, 80, 100, whatever we want. Where should we set it to? People do disagree on that. Some people say charge it to 90. I prefer 75 to 80. If I'm not doing long trips and I'm just driving around locally, I normally set my maximum limit to 75. What I like to do is leave it plugged in. When the car needs to cool or anything else has to happen that requires battery power, at least it's plugged in and the car can recharge to the limit that you set it to. Let me read you exactly what the owner's manual tells us about charging. There is no advantage to waiting until the battery's level is low before charging. In fact, the battery performs best when charged regularly. So if you're able to leave it plugged in, that's a very good practice. And the car will decide when it needs to add charge. Number nine, noises when you're charging. They're normal. They're perfectly normal and to be expected. 
the refrigerant compressor and the fan will both kick in if the battery temperature is rising. The car knows it has to keep the battery cool when a lot of current is coming into it as we charge. So whatever noises you're hearing, within limits of course, whatever noises you're hearing are to be expected and it's just the car doing what it needs to to preserve the battery. By the way, if it's very hot out there, you may find that during this time, the air conditioner in the cabin is not giving you air that is as cold as you were expecting. That's normal. It is prioritizing the cooling of the battery over the cooling of the human occupants in the cabin. And that's as it should be. Number 10. When you're charging at home, you can actually adjust the current. So for example, if it's charging at 40 amps, but you have a kind of a flaky uh, circuit at home and it's shared with other devices, you might want to drop it down to a maximum of 30 amps. So there is a little plus and a minus sign to each side of the charge icon, and you can just reduce it, and the car will remember your previous setting, unless, of course, you then adjust it again. Because you see, the Model 3 will set it to the highest possible current that it can. It won't necessarily know that you are overloading that single circuit with other devices in your home. So if you know that, just reduce the current. Number 11. This is kind of logical, but many people don't see it. It is preferable to charge at home where the charge rate is slower, slower and more consistent. It's better to do that than to charge regularly at supercharging locations. Because you see, at a supercharger, the car is charging as fast as it can possibly handle the incoming current. Even logic would tell you that charging it slowly will do less long-term stress and damage to the battery than ramming in that charge, fast charging every single time. So to think to yourself, well, I have free supercharging, I may as well just go and charge at the superchargers all the time, is short-sighted thinking, and it will harm your battery over the long term. Slower charges from your home-based charger are infinitely preferable to constant charging at supercharged locations. And finally, number 12, another important practice when you're charging at one of Tesla's supercharging networks is this. The minute the charging is complete, if you wait and you stay in the restaurant and you're doing something else and you leave your car plugged in, you can incur idle charge fees on your account. Now, the manual tells us that if there are less than 50% of these superchargers being utilized, in other words, if the occupancy is, let's say, 40% or 30%, there are not that many cars, they will typically not charge you. But they can. When you get that little notification, charging is almost complete, and it comes into your phone probably five minutes before charge is complete, get up, walk out of the restaurant, unplug the car, move it to a regular parking place, because if suddenly while you were in there, the occupancy rose to 70, 80, 90%, Tesla will charge you for all the time you spend waiting there. You know, you might want to just write down a summary of each of these 12 tips and print them out and keep them with you because really the act of charging is almost the most central thing we do in our cars. It's the single thing that most determines how long our battery will last, how healthy it will be in the long term, how much range we're going to get from the car. So try and follow these 12 tips and make them your standard practice. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your incredible comments in the comments section. Feel free to drop me a comment on anything. And if you are in the process of buying a new Tesla, use um, either my link or somebody else's link and get yourself uh, a certain amount of free supercharging once you take possession of the car. Using the link automatically applies this referral code and you don't have to do it. That's it for today. I will see you tomorrow for the fourth and final tip of the day for this week. And we'll start again next week. Thanks guys. Keep well.